Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Planet Zoo where we're doing a speed build habitat. We're not placing down a monorail, that's just to help me do some terrain work here. Um, yeah, we're doing snow leopards today and to be honest with you, this is kind of an apology video. Um, this is an apology for the quite frankly piss poor effort I put into the snow leopards in the career mode version of the game. Again I've spoken about this a lot recently and I'm only really talking about it because it's something that's really been on my mind a lot and that is the juxtaposition of trying to be a creative YouTuber and uh, the fact that uh, being creative and trying to build lovely stuff and producing enough content to make a living on YouTube uh, don't, don't particularly gel very well and um, you always kind of need that filler content that sort of something that you can record a couple of times a week to sort of fill in the uh, the days when you aren't able to produce something um, to a higher standard as say a speedboat like this and I thought that would be career mode and it turns out it wasn't um, but it did mean that I made some really quite naff uh, <laughs> exhibits in career mode so I apologize for that um, and instead I'm sort of fixing the problem I hope uh, by building this one here which has got a, a lot more going on with it a lot more uh, base on, in realism um, at, well at least the habitat is quite realistic the, the, the viewing structure we do is kind of crazy but still very fun which we'll get to later on um, but first of all yes uh, the habitat itself actually turns out pretty good um, I wanted to get some multiple viewing uh, spots in here uh, and also I had so much fun with the terrain uh, of the red panda uh, habitat that we did the other day the sort of tiered terrain I thought right come on then let's really push myself let's do some more uh, sort of varied terrain and see if we can go one step higher so uh, here we've got a very very varied terrain goes from quite a low point up to quite a high point uh, but then we actually have an indoor sort of cave viewing area underneath the high point of the terrain so there are moments uh, in this habitat where the snow leopard is directly above the guests um, um, it, it took a while <laughs> to get it sorted but I think it's actually turned out really good makes a really interesting looking habitat and actually one of the few times um, the guests in the game actually do come in here as well I often find that if you build dead end viewing platforms uh, like this the guests very uh, don't often use them uh, very much but here the uh, the guests do they, uh, they actually come in and, and uh, hang out with the snow leopard when uh, she's having a sleep because this is going to be the cave where she uh, where she sleeps uh, so snow leopards panthera uncia or uncia maybe i'm not too sure um also known as the uh, the ounce a uh, large cat native to uh, mountain ranges of central and south asia across the himalayas that kind of place maybe a little bit lower uh, i guess um class is vulnerable uh, on the uh, on the conservation status there's around um uh, there's less than 10,000 in the wild um which unfortunately is about is expected to decline uh, about 10% by 2014 according to wikipedia at least they're beautiful animals not actually truly leopards um as far as their sort of taxonomy is concerned um but yeah really really adorable animals very very cute and um uh, and really lots of fun to build in the game because they they have a they have quite a a uh, specific set of requirements for a habitat to be honest in fact they actually have quite a low set of requirements and that actually makes it quite a, a difficult habitat to build to be honest with you. i actually spent quite a long time just on the terrain the rock work the foliage on this one and not because there's lots of it you know it's not like the red panda one where we could fill it with trees and plants and bushes um the the, uh, the snow leopards in the game and to an extent in real life don't particularly like that much going on um in real life they spend a lot of time on mountain sides where there's uh you know the, uh, no not that much foliage to speak of uh, and in the game that is uh, definitely uh, definitely brought across so I wanted to show you a few things here that actually don't make it into the final video, but I wanted to talk about the process uh, I have a little bit here. Uh, my my basic process is always the same. I, I build a, a rough outline of a barrier, kind of throw it down, usually with null fencing, uh, throw an animal in, and then very quickly pause the game and do that there, that traversable terrain, and then basically uh, play paused 
only unpausing very briefly to make to, to see how we're getting on with the uh, with the climbable areas there um, and it's kind of a case of just keep going in uh, and one thing I did do here was was really build up the rock work there uh, and it meant that you couldn't see the animal from there so I scrapped all of that and more and ended up building this rock work that you can see here that uh, wasn't built on camera unfortunately but I've gone for a much more sort of almost like a shale uh, lots of um, flat rocks that break down over uh, a expanses but it means you get that really nice smooth uh, terrain all the way up to the top there and pretty much from anywhere in the uh, habitat you can see from that front glass panel uh, but we are going to create uh, a few different viewing areas where you can see them uh, see the animal a little bit more interestingly uh, so here then we're breaking up the terrain with some more rocks as they come down uh, tiered down into some little nooks and crannies I think that uh, I think the rock work is some of the best rock work I've done in the game spent a lot of time on it really happy with how it's turned out I think it looks really natural really uh, full and developed uh, yeah really really quite pleased with how it's come uh, about and you kind of have to spend some time on awesome rock work here because uh, as far as plants go they really don't like much at all they're, they're limited to just Asia uh, obviously but just Tega biome um, and something like 15% max i think um, and basically placing down a tree uh, is about six percent so that really gives you an idea of how little foliage you're going to be having in the habitat in fact there's not a single tree in the habitat we actually place some trees around the outside later on to give it that slight sort of height and depth um, but here all the foliage is very low-lying bushes um, sort of brambly style bush and uh, moss uh, here and um, and a few very sort of light wildflowers uh, that you would kind of get growing in the nooks and crannies of the rock. Uh, luckily, the those Himalayan um, branches, I think they're called, the, the, the sort of torn down logs, they don't seem to class towards the uh, the foliage requirement, which is quite handy because they're really great to kind of break up uh, break up the, the the expanse of rock and uh, and also sort of give spots to draw the eye up the uh, up the habitat. So really happy with how it turned out. Like I say, it's sparse, but it looks purposeful it looks like it's all meant to be there it looks like it's designed designed well and it's not just an empty space one of the difficult things in this game is to is to um, create something that looks natural um but empty i guess and it doesn't just look empty it actually looks like it's meant to be like that so really happy with how the foliage comes out you'll see at the back there there is a building appeared um out of nowhere with absolutely no um uh, time lapse of it at all uh, that's because the whole thing was scrapped so I've removed the time lapse of it and I completely start again with the building um, I was going for uh, a Nepalese uh, style of architecture because um, uh, snow leopards are actually found in a lot of different places but one of the ones uh, one of the countries they're found in is Nepal I thought that would be quite a nice, interesting um, uh, architecture style to look at. It's not something I've really looked at before. Um, uh, Nepal architecture has three major styles. The pagoda style, which is what you're looking at there, uh, that a lot of people would probably associate with places like China or Tibet. It actually started in uh, in, in Nepal, though, interestingly. Um, so there's that sort of very famous one there, which is very similar to really the East Asian theme in the game, is, is basically the pagoda style uh, of buildings. They also have a style called the Shikara style, uh, which is more um, uh, sort of still relatively pointed builds um, but um, it's more, more of a traditional pyramid style I suppose uh, and then the third one is the uh, the stupa style which is uh, what I eventually settle on with with the uh, with the final build um, stupas are um, uh, burial mounds from uh, from from Buddhist uh, religion uh, they're actually from before Buddhism was a thing, but Buddhism sort of took them on, I suppose. Um, they're like mound-like structures, hemispherical structures, um, and they contain relics of, um, uh, of, of Buddhism, often remains of Buddhist monks or nuns, and uh, and they're used as a place of, uh, of meditation. Uh, they originally started out as literally dirt mounds, um, and then over the years they uh, they become a little bit more sort of ornate, a little bit more ostentatious, and. Um, uh, and these days they're they're often uh, tourist traps. You know they're used as uh, as tourist sites. Um, before we get onto the full build of it, though, I want to talk a little bit about some fencing here. I wanted quite a nice uh, sort of leading up fence, the one side, and then something a little bit plainer here. Uh, I kind of wanted this exhibit to tell a story a little bit. You know, here down at the at the lower level, we're in more of a sort of uh, traditional village, um, you know, slightly you know poorer uh, kind of space, uh, and then up the hill there 
you come out to this large temple. So it's almost like a pilgrimage uh, here up to the uh, up to the um, the stupa. Um, the one I'm referencing here is called Shanti Stupa, and it's found in Chanspa. Uh, it's actually not in Nepal, so even though this, this is a Nepalese style of architecture, the one I'm actually building here is actually found in Kashmir, which is a, a northern region of India. Um, and it's a relatively modern one as well. It was built in 1991. Uh, I didn't actually realize that until it was finished. I did, I did think it was incredibly well kept and incredibly ostentatious and ornate um, for it to be a sort of traditional uh, build. But yeah, it actually turns out it was built in 1991 um, and it was built by Japanese Buddhists and uh, Ladakh uh, Buddhists. Um, it was built, built by an uh, original idea. Uh, it was built was uh, oh, excuse me the original idea uh, was slated by um, uh, a guruji by the name of Nikadatsu Fuji um, uh, back in 1914. And it took this long for it to uh, to get finished, but it's an incredibly uh, beautiful building. And um, and like I say, it's now used as a well. It, well, it's still used uh, for meditation, but it's become uh, very much a tourist attraction um, due to the sort of the beautiful sort of stoic religious nature of the build but also apparently it provides really um, incredible views of the of the surrounding area as well so uh, you can get some really good sort of panoramic shots and stuff from uh, from it uh, now i did have to take some liberties with the build um because the, the dome itself in real life comes obviously from the ground uh, but if i did that here then people would walk inside and not actually see the animal so um i've kind of made the whole dome uh, a big old roof uh, and it does make the whole thing a little bit big uh, a little bit unrealistic perhaps but do you know what these one-off builds i think as long as they work uh sort of within their own concepts i'm kind of happy for them to maybe be a little bit crazy a little bit wacky here building the uh, the dome itself it didn't go perfectly this if i'm honest with you it's been a while since i built a, a full dome like this uh, i i use the rotational method quite a bit in the game to build uh, to build roofs and things um but uh the building a sort of flat but tiered roof is one thing uh, building a, a dome like this is very much another so there are there are gaps where it needs to be tweaked and as you can see there was a bit of a cut there where i probably spent far too long trying to wrestle it into a smooth dome um I, it's pretty good how it's turned out but it's not it's not the best dome you've ever seen um but it definitely does kind of what it what it needs to um the biggest problem i had with this build is there's very few recolorable stone pieces in the game now obviously this is um the, these buildings are, are built mostly out of um stone a lot of them were built originally out of coral actually which is quite interesting i think um but that obviously gives them that very sort of beautiful, almost bleached white uh, exterior. And unfortunately, there aren't many stone pieces in the game. There's these plaster pieces that are incredibly useful, probably the most useful pieces in the game. Please, Frontier, in future DLC or future updates, give us more stuff like this. Just small, various sized, plain things that can be recolorable and have a very inoffensive texture. They are so useful. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I'm having to use a lot of wood pieces here because um, these sort of small beams here uh, are some of the few sort of recolorable, smaller pieces in the game. There's a lot of really gorgeous uh, Indian stonework that isn't recolorable and always stays this sort of very yellow limestoney kind of colour um, and then there's a lot of uh, really nice East Asian uh, stonework in the game that's always stays a very sort of dull grey um, that we actually use down the front of the build here but here you know the, I really wanted this sort of this almost brilliant uh, white uh, build to really sort of stand out from the rest of the habitat that's actually quite uh, quite dark very sort of earthen tones um, and I think it, uh, it sort of really does it's a statement piece this build it's very <laughs> very much a statement piece uh, here there's um, beautiful five rings um, at the top of the build there's very there's a lot of um, cultural uh, meaning behind these uh, these builds and as they go up they represent different aspects of life and uh, I think that these rings at the top represent air uh, although I've, I've lost the Wikipedia page I was reading about that before um, they are they're sort of um, hollow rings in the real build that has a, like a detailed pipe structure through the middle i just couldn't find a single piece in the game that i could do that with so that i ended up having to use those uh, pillars there to scoot some around they end up more as discs but from a distance from a glance you can you can kind of tell what they are 
And that little bit of detail on the top. Um, again, gold, not many gold pieces in the game, so we have to kind of recolor stuff, this kind of browny, uh, browny yellowy color. Um, but I think overall, it, it turned out really quite nice. The habitat, I'm incredibly pleased with. Um, I would really like to probably repurpose this one eventually into an actual zoo. Uh, we might lose this um, stupa style uh, structure and go for something a little bit more sort of subdued eventually um, but as a standalone piece i'm really happy with it it's on the workshop so if it's something that you think you can use uh, feel free to check out the uh, the steam link in the description so as we come up then i mean it really does sort of stand out there doesn't it but <laughs> we've got um uh, a couple of viewing areas here. This was originally barrier glass, uh, but to get it on the workshop, the barrier actually sort of comes right out here to get all this uh, fencing in as well. So these are just glass panes there. They're not quite as clear uh, as the barrier glass. So you can, uh, if you do download this and use it, feel free to sort of pull the barrier back in and, and, and you can use reg regular glass barrier there. We'll fill that gap. Um, to do and uh, yeah so we come down here then so we've got this sort of more sort of uh, poor man's entrance here like I say I, I couldn't really find I mean there's lots of snow leopard uh, habitats in real life but none of them are particularly sort of inspiring uh, uh, like I say they don't particularly like much um, uh, terrain uh, sort of foliage and things so they are often just sort of grass spaces with rock work and um, so I haven't really got so the actual build itself isn't really based on anything but this entrance here specifically is based on a, a snow leopard um, uh, habitat at, uh, at Zoo Zurich uh, they have this sort of wicker uh, roof here that I just thought was really quite quaint and twee and think has come out really quite well as we walk into here indoor section um, it just sort of really feels really sort of snug and really sort of close to the animal and, and the snow leopard will come and curl up here as well. It's really quite adorable. Uh, some seating here that doesn't actually do anything, but I think overall looks quite nice. You can put some education boards up here as well if you want to, if you're playing the game properly, <laughs> like me. And never puts down donation bins or anything. Uh, and then as you walk up here, we've got a very slight terrain as we come up to uh, to the build then. And like I say, it's uh, a little ostentatious, but you get some really quite cool uh, sort of panoramic views of the of the habitat here uh, going right down to the front there and you can see some of the uh, enrichment items and that little piece of barrier there is the only piece of physical barrier in the uh, the whole thing the rest is all done through rock work and uh, and terrain uh, if we can dive down no i don't think we can can we maybe jump through here Whoop, there we go so we can actually come in and see um Snow leopards do have a slight snow requirement. Um, you don't have to. If you just ignore the snow, they still stay relatively welfare happy. But I wanted to try and use the snow a little bit and make it look. I'm not a huge fan of having permanent snow in exhibits. Uh, but I thought here what would be quite fun is to have it look so that uh, it had snowed. Um, and now the only snow that's hanging around is stuff that's in shadow. So if you look, all the, uh, all the snow that is actually on the ground um, is in uh, sort of shadowy spots. Um, so it's kind of the the sun hasn't quite got to it yet to get to get rid of the last little bits of uh, snow from uh, from a previous uh, shower. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think like I say, I think I'm really happy with the habitat itself. Here you go, look when this when the snow leopards having a sleep, people do come round and see. Um, that's uh, that's really good. It's the first time I've actually sort of see them really use the. Uh, the viewing areas I've given them because a lot of the time they kind of oh there you go I was gonna say a lot of the time they stand by a wall and go oh look at this wall uh, the only way you can really fix that is use an actual physical barrier um, but obviously you're a little bit limited from a design point of view um, thanks to, uh, to Pond Shrimp uh, who uh, I shared a, a picture of this sort of half finished wall and she suggested um, some pillars and and uh, you know bits of detail down the bottom to, to make it sort of really pop uh, I think it looks really good really gives some weight to the uh, to the exhibit uh, so there you go yeah I'm really happy with this one I think it's turned out really good like I said as a single habitat I think that looks pretty good and if you've got a slightly more uh, ostentatious zoo that this will fit into uh, feel free to download it and have fun with it uh, like I say I think I would maybe like to use the habitat itself in an actual zoo later on um, but I may I may lose the, the crazy viewing area and go for something a little bit more subdued but uh, yeah I think as a, as a standalone build I think it's uh, it's turned out pretty good thanks so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it till the next one be good